Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you some overly specific book recommendations specifically about books that fo feature um, multiverse concepts or multiple timelines with following along with the same characters. Um, hopefully that makes sense and it will make more sense as I keep going. finally have four books that fit into a category that I really enjoy so I wanted to kind of bring them to you today and one thing that I think is really interesting about this book recommendation video is all four books are from radically different genres but they're using the same feature to do something interesting with their plot. So the multiverse idea that I'm talking about is basically when an author has a particular turning point or moment in the story where then the story story splits in some way and that it follows what happens if option A or option B is taken and we follow those same characters and we see the outcome of these two different opportunities. This sometimes gets known as well as like counterfactual history and that's where historians talk about well what if X had happened rather than Y or Z and I find them fascinating. A lot of authors use them to kind of talk about like missed opportunities or like um, determinism and like eventualities and the fact that we can't get past certain things and it doesn't matter what you do your life will always end up there and I just think that they're really fun to think about and play with. The first book that I have to talk about is very much like a romance slash contemporary and that is The Virgins of Us by Laura Barnett. Now this actually has three multiverse timelines and does it from the very 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 beginning. Um, it is about Eva and Jim who are 19 and they have three different situations that happen. In one of them Eva and Jim meet, they have a relationship, it is very brief and then they break it off because Eva ends up back with her ex-boyfriend because she's pregnant with his child. In a different timeline, Eva and Jim meet, they stay together and it's all good. And in the final one, Eva and Jim don't meet. Um, they have a very, very fleeting near brush and then they continue on. I think those are the three timelines. It's very easy to get confused with multiverse books, but basically the story continues from there and it is about their different lives together or not together and what happens and there's a real kind of interweaving. And I really actually didn't enjoy this book for the first half to maybe even two thirds of it. Um, it takes a very long time to get going. I feel like multiverse books can be the epitome of a slow burn because you are dealing with literally multiple stories following the same characters so it can get a little bit dull in places for the reader but if you do persist with it by the end of this book I was like literally in tears this kind of just touched on so many features of like what it means to be alive and what it means to have relationships and what it means to to have a good life and what you want out of it and how life can't be all like sunshine and roses and the fact that there will be times when in relationships you won't be happy but then there'll be times where you will i was like really surprised about how much this book struck me um it's described as sliding doors meets one day and i really didn't like the book one day so i think that this is actually much stronger than that sliding doors is a film that is a great example of this multiverse thing and i would definitely recommend you check it out as well. The next one I have is actually a crime thriller book and that is Anything You Do Say by Gillian McAllister. So this is about a woman who goes out clubbing and has a run-in with a fairly scary guy and then when she's walking back home afterwards she thinks that she's being followed by this guy behind her. She turns around lashes out and in doing so pushes him down a set of stairs to like a subway but it turns out one it wasn't the guy and two she may have killed him. Now she has a choice can she she could ring 999 to get him some help and because he might not be dead he could he could just need medical attention or she could run and it then the story splits onto what happens in both of them in one of them she goes to prison which is really really interesting and then in the other one she's very much racked with guilt and it's just fascinating seeing how those kind of two dichotomies play out and like that that split second decision that you have and how the ripple effects occur really really good fun as far as thrillers go i finished this in a day and thought that it was very very cool and very very well done and when i enjoyed about it and what I enjoy about nearly all of these actually is that no one particular timeline is considered the correct timeline using the the multiverse plot as as like a as a storytelling device I think it's really important to not put a judgment on which one is the correct or incorrect one because for a lot of these it's just talking about actions and their consequences but not necessarily that like oh if only you'd done that rather than that like this these are not books about regrets they are books about actions. And I think that that is really, really interesting and powerful. Uh, another one that I have that does technically do this, but not until very, very, very close to the end. So I just wanna let you know that now, and that is Hold Back the Stars by I Can't Remember Their Name. It's here! Um, so this is a sci-fi and it is about a utopian world, um, but then it's also about these 
two people who are um, astronauts and they're up on like a space station and they basically get separated from their ability to get back into the space station and they're like slowly running out of air. Now I guess technically discussing the multiverse bit counts as a bit of a spoiler so I'm going to chuck that up on the screen now um, and then I, once I'm done talking about the spoilery aspect you can come back. Um, so the spoiler is basically at the end as you would imagine they do indeed run out of air and it is about whether they make it so to there are three multi, like three different timeline options in one of them she survives because he sacrifices himself for her and it's about the outcome of that and then in the other one it's the other way around and she dies and sacrifices herself for him and then the final one is about the two of them deciding to stay together and love triumphing either one of them wanting to live uh yeah <laughs> yeah I don't know how much the multiverse is particularly powerful or needed um, but it was an interesting thing at the end and also I do think that this as like a book is quite fascinating its discussion of like the utopia that they put together is really weird and cool and interesting and I think as far as sci-fi's go it's doing a lot of different stuff and I think that it is well worth a read. I also did it on audiobook and it had a full cast and I really did enjoy that. And then the final one that I want to talk about is kind of again not quite the same when it comes to this multiverse idea because there isn't that like distinctive split and then we stick it's kind of more of a fractured concept but that's life after life by kate atkinson so life after life follows the um literally the entire life of this one woman but every time she is in a position basically this one is really about those like actions and turning points and kind of missing things and there are multiple times when she dies but then the clock gets rewound and she lives that bit again and she doesn't remember what happened in the previous one but she gets like weird deja vu glimpses kind of flashbacking almost ideas and that like real intuition that something's wrong and that she shouldn't do something and should do something else because it results in her death but she doesn't know that that's the reason it's a historical fiction set in the backdrop of World War II and it uses this feature to be able to jump around in different sections of World War II and uses her as a way of like seeing different um, frameworks of it and I think that that's really really cool and interesting. The beginning's a bit weak, the end's a bit weak, kind of a given with a book like this. It's very difficult to set up this as like a, as a feature, as a way of telling a story and as she's a woman who genuinely can't die without rewinding the clock on how she dies it's almost impossible to end like there was never going to be a satisfying ending to a book like this I don't think but I generally really enjoyed it as a feature and I thought that it was so well written and Kate Atkinson is a woman who knows her craft she can write and I think that that really helps to carry along this bit when it gets to some slightly strange or maybe absurdist sections I think that her technical ability helps to carry that through so that is it from me these were some overly specific book recommendations featuring books about multiverse worlds I think that that's or multiple timelines even and and uh, yeah, that's I, I would really recommend all four of these books. And if you know of any other books that do this and they have multiple timelines, please, please, please do comment them down below because I absolutely love it as a feature and I'd love to read more of them. If you enjoyed this style of video, again, also do let me know because I have a few other topics that I could do like some overly specific book recommendations on and I'm just trying to, I want to make sure I've got definitely four in each one, but it's something which I would really like to do a bit more of. So if you did enjoy it, please do let me know so I know to try and make more of them. Um, yeah, so that's it. I hope you have a wonderful reading week and I will chat to you soon. Bye.